And so, you know, but, but really to um, understand, I think, um, to understand why the internet was always a weapon. Uh, it's, it's, I think, important to go back to the larger cultural and political environment in which it was built. Um, because back then, in the 1960s, you know, America was still a relatively new empire, uh, overseeing a, an increasingly chaotic world. It, had, uh, it, was fighting, um, it was fighting insurgencies all around the world, from Southeast Asia to Latin America. And it was also facing an increasingly hostile domestic situation. Uh, there was the anti-war movement, there was the civil rights uh, movement, there was militant black activism, there were groups like the Weather Underground that were uh, bombing federal buildings. It seemed like there was revolution happening uh, around the world and also a re revolution happening internally. And so in America, military planners and, and po politicians saw this as two sides of one fight, right? That both of these things were connected, and they were both connected to the, to this, to the, to the Soviet Union. That the Soviet Union, while it was fighting this kind of cold war with America, traditional military and, and, and nuclear forces, it was also fighting a new hybrid war against America by funding insurgencies all around the world and funding uh, protest movements and opposition movements in America. And so, in certain rarefied circles in, in the military at, at the time, it was seen, it was believed that in order to fight this new kind of war, you needed a new kind of weapon, uh, a, a new kind of management weapon that could allow uh, military planners, generals, politicians to see the world in real time, essentially, to have a, a, as much as possible. That was the dream. 